What's up? My name is Kalkidan Asafa. I also go by Drip and Soul. Um, I'm the visual art coordinator for House of Pain Festival this year. Um, and this is House of Pain. You know, House of Pain is Ottawa's um, urban arts festival. All the hip hop culture. So we got everything going on here from concerts to graph writers and dudes making big productions. We got a dance floor. We're going to have huge b-boy battles you know what I mean so like this is this is house of pain man this has been going on for 16 years this is the 16th year this is the Ottawa staple it's for the culture it's for the people it's grassroots um yeah and we out here I've been painting since I was old, since old four, and uh, I haven't really been painting long. Um, I enjoy it because you know being being around people that are like-minded and, and inspiring just makes you want to get better every day, you know. Um, and plus, you can just vibe out, you know. You're just hanging with people, hanging with friends, talking and painting. It doesn't really feel like doesn't really feel like work, you know. Microphone check, one, two. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yo, it's your boy Love Someone. You already know what it is. And if you don't know what it is, you're about to know what it is. My name is Love Someone, Toronto based human, uh, out in Ottawa, painting for House of Paint. Uh, a little inspiration about this, uh, this wall was like uh, inspired through an artist uh, that I just recently found out about. I don't know how I didn't know about them, but they're amazing. Alphonse Muka. Um, and it's like sort of, we sort of just divided it into like uh, one of their paintings, which is like the Four Seasons. And um, I really didn't want to do air because it's so conceptual and really hard. And I was a uh, bad straw and got that one. So I had to do air. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's kind of like uh, just, we're all just taking our own interpretations of like a sort of a feminine figure, like a humanoid um, and representing different elements. Um, so it's exciting to see everyone's styles kind of like coming together and like it's interesting seeing everyone's process and like yeah like you know just like painting together it's always a good time like always a lot of learning and like uphill battles and some challenges that are like exciting and fun so uh, yeah happy to be here yeah. <laughs> what do people don't see about uh, graffiti? I feel like there's a lot of miscommunication leading about graffiti. People don't know. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think that for me, like the biggest misconception of, um, well, there's two misconceptions, and one of them is maybe more moral. So there's the illegality of graffiti and the nature of it. Um, so often people will ask me on the street when I'm painting, oh, like, you know, do you have permission to do this, or are you authorized to be here? And uh, you know, I'll be like, is it beautiful? Like, do you like it? And I, I and I always kind of stumbled. They're like, uh, like yeah, I like it. And I'm like, okay, so if it was illegal, does that change? You know what I mean? Like, does the power of art now not matter to you because because it's illegal? You know? And like that whole idea that something is a is a is a criminal act is no longer beautiful. I think that if if it's a form of expression, even though it's illegal, it's still a form of expression. You know what I mean? And it's still like it's still something beautiful. And. Uh, the other misconception is tagging. Like a lot of people like say, oh, you know, I like, I like what you're doing, but I don't like those tagging bastards. You know what I mean? Like those taggers, you know, rats. But if it wasn't for those tags and if that we did when we were younger and like still do, we wouldn't be developing on the street and we wouldn't be developing our, um, our styles. Um, and it, it, that's, that's like the buttery essence of graffiti. You know what I mean? Like getting letters up on walls. Is, is, is the birthplace of it. And when we do that, we're going and connecting back to our roots. So it's really important that we continue to do that. Um, and that in itself is a crazy art form, you know? <laughs> like that in itself is like, you can't, you can't really match that with uh, painting in your studio or uh, 
you know, hanging work on a gallery, you know, a wall, you know, like the, the urban gallery of the streets is like unsanctioned and like, it's really, uh, it's really raw, you know, you don't get that in any other art form. My name is Tito, Tito Medina, and from the Maya Mestizo from Guatemala. And we were just uh, talking with some of the uh, people who were helping to build this stage. And then uh, come to us the idea to put this Maya calendar together. Maybe the, the uh, idea of this is um, to remember that uh, some things we need to invent, some others we don't have to invent but to connect all the legacy of uh, any culture in the world and what we're doing now and what is going to be done in 13 generations or more generations uh, later on. I said it's the individual and collective wisdom that comes from any single people, you know, and any collective since the beginning of the time. And that's important and as well to connect the youth not with the future, with the ones who are not born yet. And that's why it, we just put the traditional Maya calendar with a, a stylized, uh, uh, we create a style, and this is the date when the, the festival is going to happen. This day we, we read it as, this is Noch, we said in Maya, we say la juch no, but in, his, uh, in English would be yours directly, it's like 10 wisdom, but this 10 means the cosmos, and that's why it's like this cosmic wisdom, which means that this is the wisdom that comes from every single particle. In cosmos, it's small, a piece of dust, or maybe smaller than that, or could be a planet or a galaxy. And it, as the people invented this uh, 3,500 years ago, you know, uh, we can invent as well our own systems. It means that uh, we are just a collective uh, heritage, we are just sharing a portion of our culture, and then if this is connected with the other piece, like I said, if we come to this, this piece here, is a, a rep, you know, it's like a, something just to show the Estela in Coba. And it, that's the number, the largest, one of the largest numbers ever written by humankind. We are talking about no millions of years. No millions of trillions, septillions, sextillions, quintillions, quadrillions, trillions, billions, millions, thousands, hundreds. And then every single day, in the Maya calendar, in one count, doesn't repeat in 64 million years. And that's why every single day has its own name. Like today is nine responsibility. Belehev, Ahmak. And this is, every single day has its own meaning. And this is the way how we have kept. And is that, and honoring the spoken word is that the spoken word comes from the beginning of humankind. You know, as soon as we connect the, the, the sounds through the wind, because this is the symbol of the wind, you know, we can just share our knowledge, share our dreams, share our nightmares, and then reach consensus about who we want to relate with, in which way we can respect each other, and how we can just have a little bit more understanding about who we are. 
and this is freedom just to develop your own critical thinking and just to do whatever you want you know respecting the others and thinking that anything you do you carry the responsibility of what you do but as you don't have to be afraid about making mistakes or, or or to correct whatever you did in the past what you need is just to think that you have to put in some energy in building some things in, in the in the future and this is action 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 uh, we do something and then we analyze what we did and in that way we can produce culture The theme this year is Elevate, and for me what Elevate means is just kind of like putting people up, putting people on that platform and just kind of elevating the culture and kind of talking about things. And so for me, what I would like to inject this year's House of Pain and get out of it is just see really dope productions of a really high level, both artistically but also conceptually.